Hello YouTubers, Rob here. <coughs> Today I've been wanting to do a review of this car for some while now. It's my other car. I've got a Um Paid a couple of grand for it. Ten years old. I use that as my dad wagon, my family transporter. Um, and I use that for taking rubbish to the tip and all that good stuff. Now this is my other car. This is my um, 3 litre BMW Z4 Coupe. So this is the... Uh, oops, I'm parking in the farmer's field. No, he's alright, he's happy. Um, the... Uh, yeah, so this is... 265 brake horsepower, 3 litre, straight 6, it's a 2006 model, there's about 400 or so of these registered in the UK at the moment, they're quite a rare sight on the road, um, unlike the other Z4 Coupe, uh, sorry, the Z4 Convertible, we see a fair few of those, about 17,000 of those on the road, it's only about 400 of these as I said, and it's got the hard top, it doesn't come off, um, it's a fixed roof, tin top, gives it about 50% more structural rigidity than you'd get in the, uh, in the soft top, um, albeit, you know, that's not necessarily you know, the be on end all. Um, I think it's just a better all year round position, but then of course, come summer when I see them with the hoods down, I want the uh, convertible. So, you know, uh, I just think this thing looks a bit better generally, but you know, the Z4 convertible is a, a fantastic looking vehicle anyway. So um, this is the, the lower of the two. They only came in two options. It was built for three years, 2006, 2007, 2008. And it came in a 265 horsepower three litre, which is this one. And then a 333 horsepower uh, M, which is the Z4M Coupe, uh, which is an absolute monster vehicle by all, by all accounts. Um, and this will do, yeah, as I said, 0.60, 5.7 seconds, 5.6 seconds, something like that. It's a very blustery day today, as you can see. Um, it's a bit steamed up in here. I'll just get the wipers going. Um, the rain's dying off at the roads are very, very wet. And it's absolutely hammering it down. The wind's picked up. It's February. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take it out for a bit of a spin. I'll show you the outside of it in a bit. Things I like about it, things I dislike about it. And just give it a general review. I'm not going to go, you know, herring it around hairpin bends or doing donuts or power slides or taking it around the Nürburgring. Plenty of people do videos uh, on these vehicles of people doing that. Uh, mine's just going to be a day-to-day -day kind of ownership prospect kind of review, I guess. Um, so as a car, obviously the Mondeo is a car for all kind of purposes. This isn't. This is just pretty much a sports car. It's designed to go quickly, um, sound great, look great, and it does all those things uh, in abundance, I'd say. Um, so let's just fire her up. You okay there? Yeah. Right. Give me some more interesting things to look at. Let's get this screen demisted. Demist the button. Let's get the seatbelt on. First things first. Very quiet today on the roads. It's good. So things I don't like about it, the Bluetooth. Um, it's 10 years old now, I guess, and um, you can still connect up to your Android phone um, and you can receive calls, you can turn the volume up and down and you can hang up. Um, you can't make calls unless you actually press it on the screen. You can't cycle through the phone book anymore. Some of those features just have lost with time, I guess. They probably used to be around when Nokia's and Ericsson's were all in the market, not the iPhones and Androids you get these days. Um, secondly, the sat-nav system, whilst it does work, um, I've got it on a kind of an aftermarket disc, I guess, with a map update. It's not the BMW standard one, and that causes the screen to do all kinds of strange things. Sometimes it freezes, sometimes this thing just goes up and down randomly. <laughs> It basically gives it gremlins, um, rather strange. So I've taken the CD out, and it's been absolutely fine since then. So I probably just want to go and get a slightly outdated, but you know, official BMW one, which means updatability of the maps is going to be a bit restricted these days. Of course, everyone's just using their Androids and Google Maps, etc. So I'm not too fussed about it. It's just um, what was once a cool feature is, is no longer really a cool feature. Uh, we've got the sunglass thing, which when you press it, um, typically fires your sunglasses out you have to kind of catch them got some kind of propulsion system in there i'm not sure if it's hydraulically powered but it comes up with some force i'm sure that's not what it's supposed to do um of course it hasn't got the hydraulic system it's just not very well designed um cup holders people moan about the cup holders i think they're fine don't worry about the cup holders guys they can hold coffee if you read that they can't they can no need to worry about those um, what else don't I like about it? The cruise control, right? It works fine, but it will drop a good couple of uh, miles per hour when you set it. So you want to go to 50, you set it, you're down to 46, 45 before it decides it wants to maintain you, and then it maintains you at 45, which is not the speed you set it at. So you've got to set it and then boost it a little bit. Only a mild annoyance, that's about it. 
the gearbox, this is the manual, it's a six speed manual. I find first and second could be a little bit notchy. It's got a delay valve in it, which basically just stops you giving it loads of revs and slamming up the clutch. It's a protection feature, but it makes the gearbox a little bit notchy in first and second. And that gets wary on a on a long distance drive. Um, or certainly a commute. I'd say, a, you know, when you're just doing stop start traffic, which I do a lot of on my, on my daily commute, really. I, I, I say it's a daily commute, I only do it once a week to Manchester, it's only about 35 miles or so, so I don't drive the car all that often. The wife takes it up to work, she works locally, about a mile away, so she does the odd short run, and then I make sure it has a good workout uh, at the weekends, and um, obviously on the way to work. So slightly busier on the roads now than it was earlier, um, I'm not going to go herring it about as I said, but you know we want to talk about some of its good features, of which it has many really, its performance being one of them, um, the engine noise is, is Cracking. It's wet today, as you can see on the road. I don't feel like it's going to throw me in off, off the uh, off the road. It, it bites well. It it warms well. The engine noise. Oh, ASR kicking in there. Look at it's just it's ridiculous. Sorry, the miles per hour I'm actually covering now. Uh, hope you can't see that. Um, you know, let's be sensible. So uh, yeah. Fantastic engine noise. I did a, a little run in the wet earlier on, actually. Just to, I stopped the car completely, put it in sports mode, got the clutch up, and um, I pushed it through. And it did it in about six seconds when I played it back. So um, yeah, it's about right. I think on a dry day, uh, yeah, somewhere around that figure. I'm not. I'm not a race car driver. I'm not Tommy Räikkönen or Mickey Häkkinen or Tommy Mackinen or one of these Mackinens. Um, so I'm just an average Joe kind of driver, really. Of course, it's a bit of a treat to myself, obviously. The wife got the house uh, when we moved, and I said, well, if we're going to have the house, I'd like a car that can just be my own, that only I can go in, that I can't fit the family in. Um, and this is why we've ended up with it. I want to keep it. I want to make it a classic car proposition in time. Um, realistically, if I can keep it another 10 years or so, put it into classic car shows, there'll be even fewer around then, I guess. Um, try and keep the mileage low. I'm not covering more than about five to 6,000 at the moment a year, probably less than that, in all fairness. Um, so, it's not Hope some amount of miles on it, should be able to keep the engine and mileage low, and maybe make some back, uh, some of the money when I sell it. Um, because a lot of cars these days, you lease them, you're basically just renting them and throwing money away. I thought I'd just buy something outright that I think's got a bit of novel appeal. Being, you know, under 400 of them in the UK should keep up the value a little bit. Um, and they're just a, a cracking motor. I mean, they, they do drink fuel a little bit, give you some idea of the uh, performance. I'm not sure if you can see the uh, onboard computer there. We've got 33.5 showing at the moment, albeit it has been. Um, driven a bit more harder than it normally would. I guess you'd get, say, 30, uh, sorry, 24 about town, 30 um, on a reasonable run. If you're just cruising down the motorway for a long, long, long mileage, you, you'll get about 40. So it's not the end of the world. It's only got a 45 litre tank, I think. Um, maybe a 50 litre tank. And you're, you're forever kind of feeling like you're at the petrol station. Not because the fuel economy is bad, it's just because the tank's quite small, because it's quite a small car. Sit very low, driving position, let's go on to the things I do like about it. Have I been talking about that? Yes, the performance, the noise and the looks. Okay, these this is where the car comes into its own. Performance, as you can tell, is quick. You're never wanting for more power. It doesn't matter how fast you're going, you drop the gear, bang, you're getting hit in the head uh, hard. It's got plenty of power. Um, the noise from the straight six is fantastic. Um, it's actually got a noise generator or sound module, or sound modulator, whatever they call it. Um, that pumps noise from the airbox intake of the car's engine into the bulkhead down here. It's got two sponges, and the only modification I've made to this vehicle is to take one of the sponges out, just to make it a little bit louder. You take two out, and it really gets loud. Um, how that actually translates in real life, when you get to about 5,000 revs, because it's actually pumping in air as well, you feel a pressure change, and you feel this resonating kind of and it's it's almost like a, an opera singer um, it's just spine tinglingly good on the senses you know you're getting the rush and the excitement of the speed and you're getting the noise and I think to be honest the noise is better than the speed and I've never driven a V8 or a V12 or anything like that um, I certainly like the V6 compared to like a four pot box standard you know even a turbocharged kind of four pot I think there's something quite cool about a V6 or a straight six. Um, so yeah, I don't know what I've really talked about now um, or what I've not talked about. Let me tell you. Let me show you the outside while I've got a chance. It's calmed down a bit, so I should be able to get 
a look at this. Let's show you the inside first of all. So we've kind of got this like blue, like leather trim. Again, the, it's holding well after 60,000 miles. Um, no shine, signs of real problems with it. We've got this piano black kind of svelte looking thing here. That was an optional extra. We've got the heated seats. They're really good for a good bit of lumbar support. You can set those onto three different settings, three, two, one. And they give you a nice bit of... Uh, back and, and bottom heating. Um, the CD player is quite standard, it does the job, it's a single, single CD player. It's not got the extra aftermarket Bose system or anything like that, it's just got the bog standard speakers and that's the only thing that's not the highest spec, everything else is as highly spec as it can be. We've got the sat nav as I mentioned and we've got the trip computer the screen here. We've got the cruise control, we've got the automatic dipping rear view mirror, which is a bit cumbersome really compared to the Monday which got the same feature in a far more svelte kind of design, this is a bit cumbersome. Um, We've got, uh, what else have we got? Automatic lights, mentioned all that stuff, haven't I, really? I think mean, that's about it. Um, oh, yeah, electric seats. So, look at this rear view mirror. I love this. Look at this little flank. It's probably one of my favourite features, looking into that rear view mirror. You can see that we can see more than behind us just by this one mirror. You don't need a rear view mirror. You don't need even this side mirror, because this side mirror is going to show you what? The guy in the orange? Okay, you can see the guy in the orange there anyway. It practically looks back on itself because of the way the car kind of tapers in at the back. It's really warm in here. <laughs> Let's turn this heating down. Climate control off. 24 degrees. Crikey. Um, I'm going to get out now at risk of looking like a complete plank. I'll show you what the car looks like. <laughs> so here it is. I'm going to hold it up here so you can see it. Just crawling through this, of this road here. With an absolute nutter. Running on the back, running on the back. Oh, we've got a few cars coming now. I hate this, I look like a right dickhead. Um, so anyway, she's quite swell looking. She's quite tidy. I love her lines. She's very, very small. She sits so small. You can see her in the car park as well. And um, some of the four-wheel cars, their bumpers are, uh, they're like rear, uh, you know, bumpers are higher than her body is. She, she sits really low. Getting in and out is fun, especially for the older folk. Even the younger folk, to be honest, if they're not used to it, kind of fall into the car. You get used to it. Now to get in and out gracefully, but it's it's certainly low. It's certainly sporty. But it's wonderful long bonnet. Um, the back boot, uh, the boot practicality is really good. I've got golf clubs in the back there. You can fit two bags, an overnight bag, sleeping bag, um, all in the boot. Really good amount of space. Um, visibility all round is good. Performance is good. Also, turning circle is. Amaze balls. So look at this for a turning circle. It practically, it's like a dog, you know, when it has a sniff of its own bum. A bit like that. Watch this. Okay, just as a load of people decide to turn up and drive past. Any minute now. So um, I'll put it into sport mode and we'll just give it a little bit of a blast. Um, as I said, the traffic's picked up a little bit now, so I've got to be very careful. I'm mindful of the cyclists as well. Don't want to be an idiot, certainly don't want to cause any uh, tragedies or fatalities to myself. Here we go, full lock. Look at that, I mean, you can spin around in circles all day long like that. And away we go again. So, Sport mode's on now, what it really does is it just gives you woo, about 90% um, of the power at 20% of the press and it stiffens up the steering. The steering has been criticised because it's not very real. It doesn't particularly connect you to the front wheels. It's almost like it's just trying to simulate. Um, I think a PlayStation controller might do a better job than this steering wheel does. It turns, it turns the corners and things, but its feedback is just a bit strange sometimes. You, you, you think well, this doesn't feel very good or feel very correct. Right, so obviously it's wet. I'm mindful that uh, you know we can't go too crazy. I'm going to get to 60 anyway from start. So you want to start timing this. I'll give you a 3, 2, 1. From sports mode's on. 3, 2, 1. Sideways forwards there, um, a bit like an oar on an aircraft. But, um, there we go, there we go, enough of that anyway. So I hope that's uh, satisfied anyone who's potentially looking at one of these vehicles. Do do it, um, it's not a great all round prospect, it's just a fun little once in a while driver to get the adrenaline up. Be careful, be sensible, respect the road users, respect the law. Take care.